sure you understand. Stakeholders on every project include the project manager, the individual responsible for managing the project, the customer, the individual organization who will use the project product, the farming organization, the enterprise whose employees are most directly involved in doing the work of the project, sponsor, the individual or group within the performing organization who provides the financial resources and cash on kind for the project and project team members, the people doing the work on the project to realize a product. Conduct of project in, is influenced by organizational structure, range from fully functional to totally project oriented, organizational culture, conservative or aggressive, participative or authoritarian, and organizational systems, suitability of the support functions such as finance, human resource, management and structure planning or project work. Now, influence of organization on the structure of projects. There are different types of organizations. These organizations are categorized basically in three ways. Functional organizations, matrix organizations, and projectized organizations. Now, this chart shows the authority of a project management in different types of organizations. Generally speaking, most organizations come up as projectized. That means they assigned a project, and in order to, in order to undertake that project, they are organized. People are hired based on the requirements of a project. Such organizations are called projectized organizations. With the passage of time, these organizations change their structure. How do they change the structure is? that whatever functions are needed, those functions are supported. For example, when the project starts, there's only one project manager. He's a project manager who looks after just everything in the project. Finance, he looks after. Procurement, he looks after. Administration, he looks after. Quality, he looks after. He looks after everything in the project. With the passage of time, the functionalities keep adding. For example, the first thing he does is find a finance manager. Then he finds a GM or manager administration. Then he finds a manager quality. Then he finds a manager procurement, right? So slowly and gradually, the other functionalities and organizations start adding. And the time passes by. When the time passes by, all of these groups, they start increasing their strength. For example, you hire to start the project, and the first guy who's in there is the finest match. Now he's a young man, you know, like 30 years of, or 25 years of age, or 26 years of age, right? He's recently qualified as finance, and he joins the project. And he starts growing up with the project, right? When he grows up, he's sitting alone. The project requirements are also going up, but then he also needs, because he's a manager, he needs some support. So he, get, he, he hires an assistant manager, right? And the time goes by, and then he hires another system manager. And then he hires another system manager, right? So he's got three system managers now, and he's a manager. With the best of time, he gets promoted to become a general manager. He becomes a general manager, a few of the people under him, they become managers, and those managers then start, you know, uh, right. finding their own assistant manager. So the departments start growing exactly like this. A procurement person starts from one manager procurement to about 30 project uh, procurement guys in the organization. So with that kind of situation, the organizations grow. The best thing to happen to an organization is to have a tooth to tail ratio of 30 to 70. That means 30 administrative pe people and 70 technical people, percentage wise. Right? That's a very good situation. Till that time, it's a very good projectized organization when you have that kind of a tooth to tail ratio in an organization. But what happens is, with the passage of time, this ratio starts getting disturbed. Why? Because the technical people are only those people who are doing the technical work, and they are the people who are required to do technical job. They don't change. They don't enhance that because initially, whatever is hired, they, you know, by and large, add just few more people, and they stay. But the administrative or functional departments keep on growing in an organization, right? And then the, all these people start devising their own bylaws in their own organization. For example, the finance manager had the, uh, you know, all approvals from the director of the project or project manager. 
but now he has his own uh, you know uh, department in which he starts formulating rules and regulations either he borrows the rules and regulations from some old organization or he starts formulating the rules and regulations right these rules and regulations have different kinds of name in different organizations right General, many times they are called financial authorities and many times they have other names also in the in this uh, uh, booklet that they formulate then once they have done that they get the approval of the project manager for that and they start implementing their own rules earlier it used to happen that you know the project when there was only one project manager he used the project manager used to tell this uh, guy okay buy me 50 computers and he says sir uh, okay no issue i have the accounts uh, uh, available i'll buy the 50 computers tomorrow now with the passage of time when now this number one guy tells this general manager of finance buy the computers he opens up the book he said buy the computers buy the computers no, he can't buy the computers for a project in which the finances have these problems. So he goes to the finances and says, well, the problems over here, so therefore I can't buy so many computers. I have to, if I buy computers, I'll have to, if I buy more than 30 computers, I'll have to go to uh, another method, which is, you know, selection of a vendor. So he goes into a selection of vendor process, right? And, uh, and so many other regulatory things that he goes through. So earlier, you know, when this guy used to say, give me 30 computers, next day that those 30 computers used to be on his table. Now once he tells the finance manager to buy me computers, he takes about two months to get those computers because he follows the rules. So the lethargy sets in into the organization, right? And there's a time in the organization in which that it becomes extremely difficult to do a uh, good, fast, efficient completion of project in a given period of time. Okay? So that means after some passage of time in an organization, the efficacy of an organization reduces. Right? This is called the life cycle of efficient organizations. Life cycle of an efficient organization all over the world. It's not Pakistan related, it's all over the world. You know, it's about 15 to 30 years, maximum 30 years. After, say, 20, 25, 30 years time, the organization, organizations are no more efficient enough to undertake new projects. So the clients who look at the organizations, they see the lifestyle of the organization and the efficiency of an organization, they look at them and compare with all other organizations and therefore they choose to give the projects to much younger organizations who are much, um, much more efficient than the older organizations. But sometimes you also look for the name of the organization. Yes, they look for the name of the organization. But, but then the track record also is an indicator of their, so many times they're very big names, but they can't really execute. But some of the projects for example, I have given you an example. For example, I have made a road, CDA area, for example. So CDA area is also a machinery, a whole set up, they do it and Habib Rafiq is also. So I will compare both of them, the CDA is very early and the Habib Rafiq is very late. So I will say that I will give who I will, so I will never give the CDA, I will give the Habib Rafiq. Although it is a much younger organization. But I know that it is a very efficient organization. The CDA is very old, it has a big name, it has a big job. I would not like to give that because they are very lethargic. Right? So, नाम बड़ा होने से आप खाली ये नहीं देते आप उसका ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड भी देखते हैं कि इसका ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड और डी यंगर ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस आर ऑलवेज मोर एफिशिएंट दें डी ओल्डर ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस राइट हाँ दे आर मेथड्स एंड टेक्निक्स ऑफ एक्चुअली इनहैंसिंग डी इफेक्टिव लाइफ एन ऑर्गेनाइजेश a guy who formulates an organization uh, or the uh, hierarchy in an organization, he should understand how does the life cycle of an organization impact on the efficiency of an organization. And then based on that, they should 
ایکچولی وہ جس آرگنائزیشن میں ففٹی ففٹی ٹوتھ اینڈ ٹیل ہو جائے نا وہ کام کرنے کے قابل نہیں رہتی اور پھر سکسٹی فورٹی ہو جائے تو پھر سمجھو کہ بالکل ختم ہو گیا اور یہ تمام آرگنائزیشن کے اندر دس از اے فیکٹ کہ دس از واٹ ہیپنس ان لیس آن دا فرسٹ ڈے یو فارمولیٹ این آرگنائزیشن ود اے اسٹافنگ لیول اینڈ دا ہیرارکی دیٹ یو شو ناٹ بی ایبل ٹو انکریز بائی لا یو شو ناٹ بی ایبل ٹو انکریز دا ٹیل The tail must be limited. Tail must be dependent on this. This is because they are called, they are called support staff. The support staff must be limited comparative to the actual technical staff. Sir, the problem is that in any other organization, HR is more powerful than the technical organization. Yes. This is a technical organization. یہ وہی ایشو ہے نا پہلے وہ ایک ایچ آر مینیجر ہوتا تھا اب ایچ آر کے اندر ایک ڈائریکٹر ایچ آر ہے جو پروجیکٹ ڈائریکٹر ہے وہ بھی اتنا ہی سینئر ہے اور ایچ آر کا ڈائریکٹر بھی اتنا ہی سینئر ہے جب وہ اتنا سینئر ہو تو وہ اور اس نے رولس ریگولیشنز بنائے ہوئے ہیں وہ کسی کو ہلنے ہی نہیں دیتا ہی از ناٹ وریڈ اباؤٹ دس تھنگ کہ پروجیکٹ اچھا ہوتا ہے کہ نہیں ہی از ناٹ وریڈ اباؤٹ دس تھنگ واٹ از دی ایفیشینسی ان کنڈکٹنگ اے پروجیکٹ ہی از اونلی وریڈ اباؤٹ دس تھنگ آر دا رولس بینگ فالوڈ اور ناٹ Right? When somebody gets hired, especially in the public sector organization, when somebody gets hired, you can't really fire him. Which is such a bad rule in the project as organizations that you cannot live with that rule. You must have the authority to hire and fire. If you don't have this authority to hire and fire, then your organization cannot run. Other thing that you need to do in the organization is when you formulate the organization of an organization, then you must limit this tail to a certain height for example you should say the vacancy for the administration is only manager administration the vacancy available to have a finance is only gm finance and that's it there should be no direct finance if somebody wants to live in that position for 20 years it's okay with him right and if somebody wants thinks that you know he's not getting an opportunity to grow in that organization he should go and join some other organization Right? But then you must limit the functional managers to their sizes and let the technical people grow so that you can efficiently understand or execute the project. This is one of the methods. Now, what happens is that during this process of actually formulate or transition of an organization from projectized to the functional, some things happen. This is what happens. Projectized to a strong matrix to a balanced matrix, to a weak matrix. Now this is all related to the level of your tail in the... You have 30, 70 over here. You have about 40, 60 over here. You have about 50, 50 over here. And then you start depleting over here from 60, 40 to 70, 30. For example, in CDA, if you look at CDA, you would find that it is somewhere between weak matrix and a functional organization. There are very few people who can undertake the projects, and there are a lot of people who, into, who are into the administration. So administration is heavy, and the technical execution people are very low. Right? If, if, if for example, you're talking about, say, setting up a manufacturing unit, and uh, the actual process of setting up the manufacturing unit was a project that was executed. Once the ma manufacturing unit is made operational, then after that it needs to uh, transform itself into a functional okay. organization. Now, you, you're talking about a project, right, which is going to get into production. I'm talking about an organization. یہ فرق میری اور آپ کی بات اس کے لیے ڈیزائن ہوئی تھی نا لیکن وہ آرگنائزیشن صرف اس کو بلڈ کرنے کے لیے ڈیزائن ہوئی تھی آپریٹ کرنے کے لیے نہیں ہوئی تھی اس کے لیے ایک نیا پروس نئی ایچ آر ہوتی ہے جو آپریشن کے لیے کام کرتی ہے کیونکہ اس میں وہ لوگ نہیں ہوتے جنہوں نے بلڈ کیا ہے بلڈ کرنے والے نکل جاتے ہیں اور یہ آئی ایم ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا آرگنائزیشن وچ آر پروجیکٹ آئز آرگنائزیشن دے آر آرگنائز ٹو انڈرٹیک پروجیکٹس رائٹ And then organizations get a transition from a projectized organization to a strong matrix. Here's a, 
Here, the total 100% authority lies with the project manager. Here, about 90% with the project manager. Here, about 80% of the project manager. Here, about 70% of the project manager. And here, it's less than 30%. Right? So this is what happens. I need to call back. This is a general who's calling.